Hello and welcome to the BC Training Place, the YouTube channel that not only shares with you how the best ERP system, or at least one of the best ERP systems uh, in the world operates, but also tries to help you understand why it works the way it does and how its functionalities would apply to your real world uh, scenarios. So uh, today it's gonna be a, <clears throat> a naturally short clip for what I've been doing lately. Uh, but uh, as you might be used by now, I'm I'm actually creating those based on uh, scenarios that I find people ask questions and need explaining. So it's also kind of a shortcut for me to share with other people uh, instead of having to explain the same thing a million times. So <clears throat> something which hopefully all of you are using are the built-in auditing functionalities of Business Central. Um, and there's a few, and I might actually do a separate clip to explain all of them, but uh, the most important and most commonly used one is the change log, um, which is a very handy tool, which long story short is something you enable here and before you enable it or even after you do, you can <clears throat> go through a setup where you essentially see all of the tables in the system, at least the ones that you um, may want to track for some reason. Um, and for each of them, you have an option to select whether you want to log insert or modify or delete operations. And there are some more detailed setups on down to field level. So you can try to include only specific fields in this log. So once you've enabled this, however, it starts creating these entries. Um, and as you can imagine, they can quickly start piling up. So right now I that uh, these are just some system ones which are created uh, whenever you just perform regular operations uh, like setting up uh, the initial users and so on. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't actually activated to track anything uh, specific. Uh, but what you may also want is periodically to clear out these entries because they will uh, quickly um, basically clutter your storage um, and in other videos we've discussed that you actually have a limited storage especially when you're in the cloud um, so as you can see here I have a few sandboxes <clears throat> and my um, out-of-the-box storage is 80 gigabytes which will be increased in addition uh, by any paid license and of course you can buy additional if you want uh, the fact of the matter is and if you're wondering <laughs> why I see zero here because this is just the trial environment so you can, of course, buy as much storage if you want. Um, and by the way, Microsoft is nice enough that even if you um, over uh, use the storage, so like I exceed what's allowed for me, they won't actually stop your database, but they will block of you using uh, various operations, uh, like adding new users and so on and so forth. And you won't be able to create a new sandbox and so on. <clears throat> um, so storage is kind of important and yes you can buy more but it's actually quite expensive um, so you shouldn't be keeping data that you don't really need um, and you can't just go and delete the change log entries so if you come over here you see there is no delete button actually um, so you can't just willy-nilly come select some entries and <laughs> decide to delete them um, and there is a function which a lot of people and yours truly as well uh, keep forgetting to set up. Um, so I want to show you how and it's quite quick and easy. So what you're looking for are the retention policies. Um, here it's a page where you have some predefined ones, however they are not enabled. Um, and this one I think is enabled out of the box, but yeah, I have to check on this. So <coughs> you can add a few more. <coughs> However, the tables which are enabled for the retention policies are quite a few, so you can't delete everything. Um, I think you could potentially enable other tables, but that would require customizing. So you have just these guys here. And of course, these are the, the tables with log entries that you might want to periodically purge. So in addition to the change log entry, the job queue log entries are another very good example. And uh, job queues are... Uh, and again, there'll be another video explaining in detail, but the functionality which can automatically perform actions in the background. And the log entries are which tell you every time this function is running. So you might have some function which you wanna run every five minutes or so, or a few times a day, or even if it's just once a day, 
can easily imagine how thousands of entries can be accumulated. So you you, you want to delete these as well, um, as well as potentially the report inbox, um, which is something you can generate like reports you can schedule um, to be automatically generated and just wait for your in your inbox on your desktop. Yeah, sorry, row center, uh, so system desktop. Uh, same for the email box and so on. So you get the idea. You can basically set up any of those regular uh, tables that keep accumulating data where you normally don't need it for a very long period of time. So what do you do here? Uh, and I'll use the changelog entry and I specifically want to explain it because it sounds like you should be able to just hit enabled, right? And then, right, it's working. Well, actually no, because the out of the box setup that they provide is actually quite limited. So there's a few things you want to set up uh, for each retention policy. Um, and even for the existing ones, like the changelog entry, you actually have to add some more setup before actually uh, using it. So in addition to selecting the table, um, what you have here is the retention policy tab where you have several options. One is to uh, decide to make this a manual one. So manual means basically uh, the system will skip it if you will schedule um, a job queue to run all the uh, retention policies. So there is a job queue which can be scheduled um, and I think that's actually created automatically. So if you go to the job queue entries, you should see this one, yeah, retention policy job queue. So this will essentially just run through all of the uh, retention policies which are not set to manual and perform the function that you would normally say by uh, perform by clicking apply manually. So um, if you click manually, basically excluding a certain retention policy from the job queue automation. So of course you want to remove this one. Um, of course, enabled means, okay, then this is something that is active. Um, and then you can say apply to all entries, um, which you cannot do for the, um, um, you can't do it for the changelog entry specifically, there are some prohibitions. Now, you may want to activate this one if you don't want to apply any specific filters and you just want to delete everything from the table from time to time. Um, and that's fine, you can do that. Uh, but in the record retention policy, you actually normally have to select some filters. And basically what you're doing here is you, you're applying criteria and rather than just deleting all the entries older than whatever period of time, you can say for a certain type of entry, I want to apply a certain uh, period of time and for another entry, I want to apply a different period of time. So these first two lines are here by default. Um, and I think actually maybe even the third one, um, and you can't change them. So even if I want to, I can't really delete the line, uh, you get an error message. However, what you, and <laughs> as you can see, they're basically saying, well, protected, yes. Um, so it means any entry which is marked as protected, that's a system field, which means it's an entry created by the system and you never want to delete it. Uh, for special reasons. And then the other one is uh, monitor sensitive fields, uh, then all of the monitor sensitive fields are uh, not being, you can't delete them basically, or rather they're deleted every 28 days and for these ones every one year. So these are just default ones, system, there's nothing you can do about them. Uh, the third one I'm fairly certain I've added, uh, so I think I should be able to delete it, yep. So this is what you would normally see when you set up a new business center or company. Um, in a new environment. Um, and if you just enable this one and it starts running, it basically doesn't do anything because what you've essentially said is, well, I don't want to apply this policy to all entries, so this is off. And then only for the specific entries of which uh, correspond to these filters, the system will apply these retention periods. I'll explain this in a second. So for anything that is not protected and uh, not monitor sensitive fields, there is no retention policy. So basically the system is not doing anything. It's not gonna delete anything. So what you do want to do is you want to add at least one line where you apply some kind of a filter. And the simplest one you can do is you can use the uh, field lock entry feature and you can just say change lock. So this means, okay, all the entries which have to do with the change log for them apply whatever policy you want and then start deleting them. So unless you have this line, you basically don't have anything, um, which should be kind of obvious, but 
Um, I know maybe it's just me, but I actually had to have this explained to me. So only after you add this line, then it will start deleting stuff. And you can actually be more flexible. You can you can say, I want to delete change log entries, but you know what? Maybe the entries for a certain table. Um, so you can say uh, table number is easier for me. So the item records, for example, and the customer records and the um, vendors. For them, I want to apply a certain uh, policy <clears throat> and then for everything else, um, basically, which is not, which is not one of these. Oh, come on. Um, so other than item and what's the ampersand? other than customer and other than vendor. Um, so for everything else, I'm going to apply a different policy. And this is what you apply. Basically, you select what is the retention period or how long do you want to keep the data? And you have some predefined ones, but of course you can come over here and create a new one. And I can say, um, I don't know, three months. And you basically select from a period here and have three months. If you want, you can say custom and then just remember you have to add a minus. This means from today, apply the state filter and then whatever date you find, that's how uh, how you find them. So you can say minus 3M and this will essentially be three months. If I choose three months, then it's the same one. Um, and right now it's telling me everything that is older than this date is going to be deleted. So I'll say for these three tables, so I want to apply three months for everything else. One month is just fine. You enable this and you can decide to enable specific lines also. Uh, so you can enable, disable these as you want, and then you click enable. So once you've done this, now the job queue, which is running and if for some reason it goes away, um, you can actually wait, there used to be a button here. Yeah. Um, you can go and say job queue entries um, and even if this disappears there's a there's a way to recreate it so basically this is set up let me see it's running every day um i think i might have modified this one it's like running at least once a day um in uh, at night so you can modify this if you want <clears throat> so this is how you enable the retention policies. And of course, even if this is automatic, you can still click uh, home, apply manually, run this, and then it will go and try and delete all the entries. In my case, I don't actually have entries to be deleted. Uh, but once you run this, then um, the system will keep on making sure it's deleting stuff. Um, you can check there is a retention policy log, so you can check when it has run, how many entries it found in a specific run. Uh, so all of this is uh, working just fine. I think I can show you a customer database. Yep. So for example, this is a retention policy for a customer where in the policy log, you can check that it's been running and it found in this case one entry, uh, whatever. So yeah, it's, it's finding different records that you can delete. So <laughs> Of course, this is a log which you also probably want to uh, periodically delete. So uh, this is why you have another uh, retention policy log entry, <laughs> a retention policy to delete it. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, um, you just run these. So a very simple function, um, not very hard to set up, very easy to miss uh, based on experience. And then you end up with huge databases. And trust me, if you miss this, then uh, you're going to run into trouble. Um, since we're here anyway, I want to share with you also how you can solve if you run into my problem. So I actually had a customer where I forgot to set this up for more than six months. And then we already had several million records. Um, so there is actually a limitation here. Uh, the system will kill the session if it tries to run for too long and I think there is a normal um, like it, it deletes relatively easily about 250,000 records max beyond that you actually get a warning message if it's if it finds more than that um, so anyway you, you may end up if you forget to enable this you may end up with a situation where it's actually unable to delete anything because it does a count first 
which takes a relatively long time if you have millions of entries, and then it's going to start deleting. Um, and you might end up with a situation where depending on what filters you applied, the counting process itself takes too long. So what you can do then is you can use these filters and then you can basically say, hey, I want to apply a filter and you can actually directly use the entry number. So in my case, what I did was I went to change log entries. I found, of course, you may need to personalize. So I added the entry number, which would be helpful. And then I basically say, okay, I have start from this one and then you can try to export them into Excel. Uh, in my case, it was impossible. And you can say, okay, I, I see it starts from here and then I want to delete the first X number of entries. So what I did was actually uh, delete them in increments of about 200,000 because uh, I find this works relatively quickly. Like it will take uh, usually less than half an hour, I think, um, even in a really bad scenario. There are some cases where it behaves strangely. I still don't know how they uh, work. Um, so once I resolve them, I might come back uh, to explain this. But yeah, usually about 200,000 entries should be fine. And then you essentially say up to entry number 200,000. And then for this one, you can say actually it doesn't matter. So you can just say one month. Um, or you can say delete entry starting from five months ago and then you're only deleting uh, one month of entries. So basically be smart, play with the filters. For me, it's easiest by entry number because then I control exactly how many entries are being deleted. Um, and then you just run it manually. And you may also want for that period of time until you catch up and there's sufficiently small number of entries, uh, you may want to exclude this from the job queue because otherwise it will just try, run, fail, and it doesn't help. So yeah, if you run into this, uh, this is how you solve the problem. You basically apply filter, I would recommend by entry number, uh, you run it manually until you catch up. And of course, after it finishes, then you basically say, okay, up to 400,000 and so on and so forth until you're done. So yep, that's change log entry and retention policies and well retention policies mostly because as you saw you want to enable them for pretty much all of those pesky log entry tables so that's all for today i hope you like this one um if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop them in the comment section in youtube um, and as always, um, catch you in the next one. Oh, and if you do like this one, please hit the like. And if you want to receive notifications for new videos, uh, hit the subscribe button and then you get an automatic notification. See you later.